Welcome back to the DSpace Anwendertreffen 2021. We'll have a presentation coming. Welcome to the DSpace 7 Testerson. And that's something that I was really happy to see when, when, when it came in, the proposal to, to, to get this presentation to the Anwendertreffen, because the Testerson is something that I find really important for the community. It's starting on Monday. I'm really, welco uh, really welcoming Graham Luton from Admire. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Graham, take it away. Thank you very much, Pascal, and good morning, everyone. I'm Bram Luton from Admire. We are a DSpace service provider and a major contributor to the DSpace 7 release. A major DSpace release presents many repository managers with a true chicken or the egg problem. You want all the new features as fast as possible, but at the same time, you also want to wait for the first few point releases so that early production problems are resolved. What if I told you that there's a way to significantly reduce the chance on major issues in 7.0? And what if I would tell you that as of next Monday, you can personally have an impact on resolving the chicken or egg dilemma for DSpace 7? I welcome you to the DSpace 7 Testathon. The Testathon is an intensive community testing period currently scheduled for April 19 to May 7th. These are the weeks that you, me, all of us, put the release candidate version beta 5 under some real stress in order to identify the final bugs to resolve. In this presentation, I aim to show you everything you need to successfully participate in this testathon. A significant amount of testing will be carried out on a central testing server that's already accessible today, demo7.dspace.org. This means that all you need to participate is a web browser. You don't need to be a developer. You don't even need experience as a DSpace administrator. All community members work together on a central Google spreadsheet, the DSpace 7 test plan, to make it transparent throughout the weeks of the testathon what's already been tested by whom. To show you how the testing works, I'll give you a concrete example of a feature we would like to test. Similar to DSpace 6, but entirely re-implemented, DSpace 7 has a number of interface language catalogs and a button in the top right corner of the screen to switch between these languages. Let's look at one particular test from the test plan for this feature. If you open the spreadsheet, so you don't have to do that right now, but again, the link is bit.ly slash dspace 7 dash test test plan. But if you would open that spreadsheet and if you go to the second tab test cases, you will see that each line in the sheet corresponds to a specific test case. For this one, the first columns defines the test, or for all of the tests, the first columns define the test case. The unique ID enables developers and the community members to refer to a test case. Each test belongs to a feature category. Looking at how many tests we have per category of features helps us to assess how well the test plan covers the full feature set. The execution of each test implicitly starts with the imperative as a specific persona, could be an anonymous user, an administrator, uh, somebody with submitter roles, you click the URL in the URL column. So the URL is the link to the starting point of the test. For many tests, this is the home page, but it can also be the My DSpace page or the page of a particular item. Then the description column makes it clear what you are supposed to do or to click on after you've clicked that first URL. And the goal or the whole core of the test plan is that you compare what you see next with what's described in the next column, the expected results column. So in this particular test, it's pretty obvious that the interface should be rendered in the target language after trying to change the language. However, both these descriptions, as well as the expected results, they are far from trivial for many of the other tests. So these six columns together, they are the test definitions. So right now, if you go to the plan, you will notice that you, will, you are not able to edit these six columns. But if you are interested in contributing more test definitions, 
you can do this Google Sheet uh, access request, and uh, we, we are happy to give more people permissions to write additional tests. Let's now look at the next columns that you can use to record your test results. When you fill out the test results for a test, the first three columns are mandatory. You pick the most appropriate test status, for example, OK or non-compliant, and we'll have a look at the vocabulary of those statuses in the next slide. Then you record the date and your name. Optionally, you can provide more explanation in the comments column. In this case, to clarify why I've put the test to non-compliant, I have stated that the central text on the homepage, the homepage news, didn't get translated when I switched the languages. The next column allows us to assess coverage of the features from the test plan with the DSpace 7 documentation. Ideally, as much of the behavior expressed in the test plan as possible should also be mentioned somewhere in the documentation. If you want, you can dive into the, the documentation and see whether you can find it. But as I said, only the first three columns are mandatory. Uh, it's up to you whether you want to do something with that uh, documentation column or not. And lastly, all uh, the tests as tests will be marked as non-compliant. Developers will start issue threads on GitHub to discuss the problems and possible solutions. So this column is used to track whether a GitHub issue has been created to resolve the, the problem or not. As I promised, let's now have a look at the test status vocabulary. Here are some of the most frequently used test statuses. These are most of them, but there's a few more and the full vocabulary is explained on the summary tab of the test plan spreadsheet. Uh, so, okay, review, test, test unclear. They are pretty, um, pretty explanatory from what's here on the slide, but uh, tests with marked, uh, with feature postponed marked, they are kind of interesting to learn how good DSpace 7 already covers all of the functionality from, uh, let's not forget, both XML UI and JSP UI. So we brought together two UIs and tried to cover all of the, all of the features, but we're not on 100%. So you will see some tests that are writ written, for example, tests against the RSS feeds, and you will notice that the tests, uh, those tests are marked as feature postponed to inform you as a tester that it's normal that you cannot find them right now. So participating in the testathon will make it clear to you what DSpace 7 can and can do at this point. So this alone gives you or your institution um, a personal objective or, or some, some value um, for your participation. So you don't just do it out of, um, out of helpfulness for the community. It's really also uh, a valuable learning experience for yourself. So some more statuses, non-compliance is the most straightforward status to indicate that the observed behavior doesn't match what's written in the column with expected results. So if the expected results don't match, um, if what you see doesn't match expected results, you can mark the test as non-compliant. Without anything in the comments column added, that's what somebody will expect. Then there are two statuses, UI problem and user experience that are actually, uh, that enable you to give a little bit of more nuance if the test results were basically compliant. So, okay, the, the test is, you see the expected results, but you notice some things, some related things to be addressed. A few examples of what we can, can be considered the UI problem is text placed outside the boundaries of a designated box, fonts being way too big or way too small, padding issues, basically everything that makes a page look messy and unprofessional. That's, that's a UI problem. This is very different from the user experience status. And this one can be used if the feature in combination with the provided on-page tooltips are not intuitive for the user and the user, either you being the tester or you thinking or being in the mind of, of one of your users. The whole philosophy is that ideally, whenever a user is presented with a button or a choice, she will only be confident enough to click it or to make the choice if he or she knows uh, what to expect. So that is exactly why 
intuitive interfaces and, and good tooltips are important. So you, from this explanation, you can see that UI problems are pretty objective to establish. If we just make abstraction of uh, Internet Explorer versus Firefox versus Safari, I mean, there, there's a whole, uh, whole area of complexity or challenges if, if you really look for them. But in general, these UI problems are objective to establish while user experience issues are, can be very subjective. Let's say that DSpace has a pretty specific or even a weird way to approach something. It might still make total sense to you if you have already used DSpace in the past, but it might still be considered a user experience issue for someone who's new to DSpace. So this is why if you are new to DSpace to please, please consider taking part in the testathon. Because contrary to what you may think, your testing and observations could be very, very useful. There are a few more test statuses that I didn't discuss in detail on the previous slide. You can find all of them on the summary tab of the test plan. And you can also see both in absolute as well as in percentage, how many tests are in which status. And further down the summary tab, you can also see statistics of tests per user persona or per feature category to, prog to follow the progress of the testathon. As I said, the test plan only covers behavior and tests against the central test server, demo7.dspace.org. Um, as a participant, we also very much invite you to devote some attention to the DSpace 7 installation and upgrade instructions during the testathon. To report problems with those, you can comment on the applicable wiki pages, you can raise the issues on the DSpace Tech mailing list or the Slack channels. This is especially useful if your institution is either on Microsoft Windows infrastructure or on Oracle databases, because they are less common setups among the DSpace 7 developers. You will notice that even though the test plan has tests on authorization and authentication features, it does not really have specific security tests or penetration testing objectives. You're more than welcome at any point, not only during the testathon, to test things like script injection, SQL injection, uh, or other related security proofing. But it is very important that potential vulnerabilities are treated confidentially. So this way, and this is how it's been historically in the past, the committers can fast track solutions for security issues and publicly disclose them after they've been fixed. Right now, there are already institutions running DSpace 7 on publicly accessible test servers. So immediate public disclosures of such observations could put these installations at risk. And we have three minutes left. Yeah, great, because I'm, uh, I have two more slides. So throughout the testathon, there are different ways to touch base with other testers and DSpace 7 contributors. If you don't have additional questions, you can just record your test feedback in the central test plan. Um, if you see a test that somebody already executed, you can re-execute and then just you can override the, the previous test observation, so that's normal. If you prefer email, the DSpace tech mailing list is the most suitable one for questions, observations, or discussion. Or on the DuraSpace Slack, there is a channel dedicated to the testathon. And lastly, for people with deeper technical interest, please note that the actual issues emerging from the testathon will be further dis uh, discussed as issues on GitHub, so no longer on the DuraSpace Jira. There are two relevant GitHub repositories. The DSpace Angular one that deals with all the front end related problems, while the REST API and back end problems are discussed in the issues on the main DSpace GitHub repository. If you don't know where to create an issue, don't worry. As a tester, it's not, it's not your obligation. Someone else can create their issues for you, or you could reach out in the DSpace tech or Slack channels to learn more. The key thing about the testathon is to have as many tests from the test plan tested as well as the installation and upgrade instructions. So before opening it up for questions, I will leave you with one last link. This page is the central page about the DSpace 7 testathon, where you can find all the links and information I gave you today neatly organized together. That said, 
I thank you for your attention and your participation in the DSpace 7 testathon. Let's solve the chicken or egg dilemma for DSpace 7 together. Well, thank you very much. That was great. The DSpace testathon is tremendously important for the whole community, for whole DSpace um, software. It will start on Monday. You are highly involved in DSpace 7 and the testers one in the community. You answered the first questions in the test plan, I think, months ago. What will you do next week? Uh, great question. Uh, so right now, I'm not really worrying about next week yet. The main thing I'm worrying about is that uh, we still have a range of features that are not yet very well covered in the test plan. Uh, so one example is DSpace Entity. So before thinking about next week, either today, tomorrow, or in the weekend, I still hope to get some extra test descriptions in to, uh, to increase the coverage. But as of next week, I will just be there together with everybody, trying to reproduce tests, uh, filling in the test plan, maybe following up on some GitHub issues, and, uh, and just fingers crossed that we don't uh, discover very big showstoppers. So we got one question, which is just a link to your slides. I think it's more an answer than a question. So we'll mark this as answered. Are there any other questions? Looks like everybody's waiting for Monday to get started. Will it be coming up more tests and tests during the tester during the tester one? So will you add the, the missing features while the tester one is running to the test plan? Uh, it's possible, yeah. So I mean, definitely anybody is welcome to contribute more tests as uh, as we go along um, on the. Demo server specifically, Tim Donoghue just recently uh, said that also OAI is available. Um, but for example, I'm not 100% sure, for example, for the sort uh, or the sort V2 interface. So definitely it's great to get some testing on, on all of the interfaces, not just the one for the human eyes. Uh, so yeah, I hope more tests can be added too. There's our question. <clears throat> what so in the test plan, you, you have the results. And in case there's a result that notices something did not went, went well, somebody else is repeating the test, but comes to another result, what to do? Should they leave the results standing there that's saying it's not working? Should they correct it? Should they fix it? Will we, have, will we add more columns for different answers? How to proceed? Um, right now, there is no hard agreement on whether or not deployments of new fixes will be done throughout the testathon. In general, DSpace 5 beta should be the thing that is deployed and we should have we should be testing on the same stable version throughout these whole three weeks. However, if it comes up that um, like a major feature is broken due to some configuration issue, like for example, nobody can submit new items, then of course the DSpace committers will jump in and make some changes to the server anyway. So that there can be changes in the behavior of the system throughout the testathon. But basically the main assumption is that the more recent your observation, the, the more correct it is. So you can always override an older test status with a newer one, especially because Google Spreadsheet has this versioning, I mean, has this history functionality that you can, that you can look back. Uh, but I would recommend to be very careful before you remove anything that somebody else wrote in the comments column, because in the comments column, somebody can say, this was the, these were the, um, the edge conditions that were at play when I did this. So then just make what you added in the comment column, make it bigger or use the Google uh, commenting feature to start a comment thread on a specific cell. Um, but if you're not sure, just ask in one of the, in either the mailing list or in the in the chat. I mean, um, we have histories, we have backups of the test plan. We will probably make a backup every day. So you should not be afraid to, uh, to enter stuff and change things. I think the Slack channel is generally a good good idea to join. It's a lot of information about DSpace coming through. A lot of people over there, you can ask about almost anything regarding DSpace. 
Okay. Grant, thank you very much for your presentation. Thank you very much for your time. Hope to see you soon again. Bye bye. Thank you. I will stay online and I will be in the in the Tayman Tisha and then I will sign off. Have a nice day, everybody. Great. Thank you.